So we're going to be continuing our advanced thermal filler demonstration. Um, we're going to be working with this young, beautiful lady. Um, she's almost perfect, but her concern is that she would like a little bit more of a medial cheek. Okay, so we're going to be drawing. I'm just going to be demonstrating uh, some points to kind of help you gauge where we would want to work. Uh, but basically, we're going to be going from the lateral uh, corner of the mouth to the lateral canthus and I always kind of like to draw from both directions and kind of meet myself halfway okay and then from the lateral uh, part of the nose to the tragus and so we're creating that line this way so if you use this as a guide Basically what this does is it kind of guides us as to, do we want to work on the lateral cheek on her? In her case, she's got beautiful apex. She's got beautiful lateral cheeks. So for me, the answer is going to be no. Her problem is that when she smiles, she loves the way that apple accentuates, but when she, uh, puts her face in a neutral position, everything kind of drops a little bit. Um, so that's this area here. Now, typically, um, that's an area that is, um, you know, a little bit on the dangerous side as far as um, uh, injecting is. So it's not recommended for a beginner injector. Um, this is territory. Um, if you have her look at you, you're guiding yourself by that pupil. And so that is territory for that inferior foramen uh, where the neurovascular bundle uh, comes out of. So you want to be very careful uh, that you're not in that area. Okay. So keep that in mind. We're going to get our syringe ready. Remember, we're wiping with alcohol once and then we're doing that second pass with Hibby Cleanse. We want to make sure that everything is nice and clean. I typically erase these lines. I don't actually use them. I just wanted to demonstrate for purposes because it does um, help for some people to have the lines. I'm like, more importantly, to inject in a sitting position, looking at the patient straight at me so that I can gauge for any asymmetries and I can really kind of customize exactly where I would like for the filler to be. So I'm gonna ask her to smile for me. She tells me that she doesn't like when she gets that little depression in that area there. So go ahead and relax. Perfect. So we're gonna go ahead and I always like to see where the bone is and I put my finger right underneath it without distorting my anatomy. Tiny little pinch, so we're gonna go and I'm always pushing up. So you notice that my hand, um, without distorting the anatomy, is pushing in the direction that I'm trying to um, achieve. So I'm always going for that lift. I'm at the bone, I stabilize my needle, I aspirate, and then I'm slowly going to put a small aliquot. I usually start with about 0.1. I come out and I reevaluate. Now she has beautiful tissue. So literally that point one um, just kind of made that area just pop out very nice. All right, so we're gonna take a look and now I'm gonna go on this side here, tiny little pinch. Now she has been icing before. I like to ice before the procedure that helps to um, vasoconstrict any vessels. We're going down to the bone we're aspirating and we're injecting very slowly. Now she is a great patient because a tiny bit of filler goes a long way with this young lady. All right, tiny little pinch. Down to the bone. Little pressure. Anything bleeds, you hold pressure. Pressure is your friend. It makes a tiny little bruise and it keeps it tiny as opposed to you continuing to let it bleed. And then next thing you know, you have a giant hematoma and depending on the skin color or pigment, you have somebody that um, has a permanent bruise for six months or more. So always keep that in mind. Pressure is your friend. All right, so have the patient look at you so you can reevaluate. Beautiful. One more little pinch here. All right.
All right, guys, so inject slowly, aspirate, make sure you're at the level of the bone. These are the ways to keep yourself safe. Nothing is 100%, look at me, but it definitely helps. Now she has beautiful anatomy to work with. So with her, we're not so much doing high quantities of filler, but rather smaller aliquots. Um, ask her to smile, go ahead, perfect, relax. Because all we're trying to achieve with her is just to give her a little bit more apple in those cheeks that already look great. You don't wanna add large amounts of volume because you don't wanna make her look overfilled. And relax. Perfect. Almost done. And I'm actually going to go a little bit lateral just to make her a bit more symmetrical. And we are done. All right, so I always tell my patients, there's nothing you need to do except tonight I want you sleeping at a 45 degree angle. And that's just so tomorrow there's not a lot of swelling associated with the filler. Try not to touch it, not to massage it. I want it where I put it. The filler doesn't really become permanently at the site that you put it in um, for about two weeks. So you don't want them sleeping on it if at all possible. Um, so if you can sleep on your back tonight or for the next few days, that would be greatly appreciated. All right. You feel okay? Great. Awesome. <laughs>